Hey everyone, uh, it's really good to be here. Uh, so I'm a PhD st student studying crowdsourcing, and in particular, the stuff I work on is how to build better systems for people to work with each other and in combination with computers. And today I'm going to be talking about some really exciting synergy between crisis mapping and social science. So social science is all about how people interact with one another, and in particular, fields like management, sociology, and social psychology are really interested in how teams and organizations can work together. So given that, you might find it surprising that there hasn't been a lot of rigorous insight into how to build better organizations. And that's because since over a century ago, a lot of this research has been done by looking at a few examples in the world here and there, and then extrapolating into theories that may or may not have applied in general, because they were hard to test. So around the 1960s to 1970s, some researchers tried to get more principled about this by building labs where they could actually take a group of people and study how they interacted while working together. These labs are important because they give some control over the task and setting in which people worked so that we can test hypotheses and come up with reproducible research findings. Um, they had some really elaborate equipment, uh, at least for the time, like these pre-modern age ancient computers and tape recording devices and other types of electronics. So what happened to these labs um, and what did they find? Well, it turns out that they didn't actually give us much information apart from how a group of people could work on an abstract task in a room. And that's because that is just hard to compare, for example, to say a company or organization in the real world. Um, and in particular, the data that was generated by these ancient machines was really hard to use and analyze. So this kind of research about how teams work together has kind of been dormant for many decades. Things actually got really interesting a few years ago when Patrick Meyer was talking to some researchers here in New York about how the standby task force was doing live crisis mapping on the internet with volunteers who are working together uh, to actually do something pretty complex, like damage assessment after a natural disaster. And what was more interesting, perhaps, is how they had organized themselves to do this, using mapping tools, Google Docs and spreadsheets, and Skype for communication. The organization of the standby task force actually evolved a bit over time, with different teams to tackle different aspects, such as geolocation and verification, and leaders to coordinate among the teams. Um, so you might, you might know that the standby task force has actually been doing fewer live deployments recently. And one of the reasons for that is the intense load this puts on a small group of volunteers. So what if we could learn to mobilize people better so that we can either make use of more contributors or reduce the demand on any one particular person? And how might we be able to improve over the organization as it's been done in the past? So that's what we've been trying to learn over the last year by building a, a real-time web app that allows a group of people to work together in live mapping. Um, here you're seeing some data that's been mapped from Typhoon Pablo. It's historical in, in 2012. And this app basically contains a lot of the tools that the standby task force has used in the past, but all in one place. So it takes Twitter, SMS, or other data as input, and through real-time collaboration by a team in doing filtering, geolocation, chat, and verification, produces a crisis map as output. But more importantly, other than just getting from the input data to the output map, it captures how the team is working together, from their communication patterns and the division of their work and the, their progress over time. So the idea, uh, we have two major goals for this. One is to understand how different team structures can affect how people can work together, whether that's in a task like crisis mapping or something else. So this might finally be getting at what those social scientists were trying to do almost 50 years ago, because crisis mapping is actually a real task with real data and not an abstraction from the outside world into a lab. The second and probably more pertinent goal is to take what we're learning and apply that to improving how we can mobilize people when we're doing live mapping. So it's my first time at this conference, and there are a few things I'd really like to learn from all of you while I'm here. As someone who's worked on this mainly from a research perspective, um, I haven't met many people who've done live mapping before, so I would really like it if you could tell me about your experiences working on a live mapping team. And also really grateful if you could tell us, uh, give us some feedback about our app um, so that we can improve it for a potential use in the future. So I'll be doing a self-organized session on Sunday where I'll have plenty of time to demo the app in more detail and for your feedback. Um, so thank you, everyone, and I really hope to get to know many of you over the next few days.